Welcome back. A couple of uh, housekeeping issues for or issuettes for us to deal with now. Um, we're going to um, have to create a file system on here if we actually want to make this device usable for us. So um, Dev Mapper is there. It's available. It's 20 gig, which is what we wanted, or as it says, 21 and a half gig. Um, we now, to make that usable as a file system and mount it up, so that we can go and create files on there, we actually want to format that disk. So to do that, we go F disk and give it the dev mapper. And once we go in there, we can go um, P for partition. Uh, sorry, N for creating a new partition. Yeah, and it's a primary one. We want to call it partition one and we want to go from the start of the disk and we might as well go to the end of the disk and we'll write that and this will give us an error message because it says rereading the partition table failed but it is there because if we do an f disk minus l there it is there's our actual partition so now we want to make a file system on there um, ext3 dev mapper grab that copy it paste it's interesting could not stat it is that because it needs a reboot interesting Okay, welcome back. So indeed, it did seem to need a reboot. So as you can see here from the reboot, I've uh, gone in and basically done a more proc partitions and there's our SDA and SDB. And down below, when I do an FDisk, um, oddly enough now, I don't get any mapped devices, which is very interesting. Um, but I do see my SDA and SDB which are our 21 gig iSCSI mounted partitions. So I'm going to just make a file system on there where we left it the last time, um, SDA1, uh, SDA. And we're going to proceed anyway, and away it goes and creates our file system. So we'll give that a couple of minutes and then what I'm going to do is just go mount that, add it to um, our Etsy FS tab so that it will mount every time we reboot. I'll do a reboot again, make sure we can do that. And then I'm going to come back and have a look at this, um, why we don't suddenly have um, a dead mapper anymore, even though clearly our... Um, our disks are there over the iSCSI, so um, I'm going to do a little bit more investigation into that. Nevertheless, uh, from an endurance storage point of view, we have instanced our endurance storage, got our 20 gigs, um, we've then got our Linux virtual machine, we've loaded the multipath and the iSCSI initiator, we've successfully mapped our drive, we're now in the process of, uh, sorry, we formatted our drive to create a file system, uh, the size of the whole disk. And now we are, after a reboot, um, able to make a file system, an ext3 file system on this um, endurance storage. We're gonna mount that in a minute, add it to the XEFS tab, reboot the machine, and hopefully it'll all be there. Um, I was hoping that that uh, long recap on what we were doing would give us enough time to have the file system written, but I think it's gonna take a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna pause it there and wait for that to finish. Okay, that's all finished now. So, we now have um, our file system on there. Um, because we have a file system, we can now mount that actual drive, so, in order to mount it, I'm going to make a directory in MNT called iSCSI, I might as well. 
and I'm going to mount slash dev slash sda1 uh, sorry sda onto slash mnt slash i scuzzy give that a couple of seconds Okay, I'll do a mount, dev sda, there it is, cd slash dev slash sda, oh sorry, cd slash mnt slash iscuzzy, do an ls, lost and found, it's the only thing on there, perfect. There it is. It's exactly what we wanted, our 20 gig file system. So now we have our file system. Um, if we reboot it now, it wouldn't come back. So we want to vi slash etc slash fs tab. And we want to add to this at the bottom line, if you want this to persist through the boot, which is probably something you want to do quite often, um, you want to put in slash dev slash sda um, tab uh, slash mnt slash i scuzzy tab and it is an ext3 that's what we made it and it's an underscore net dev that's what you want to do um, in fact, I'm going to change these tabs into spaces to make this a little bit more readable. My scuzzy. Perfect. Okay, escape out of insert mode. And we're going to reboot once more. And when that comes back, we're going to log in. And hopefully everything we need will be there and it will have persisted through the boot. Join me in a sec. Welcome back. Um, it's rebooted. I know we can get in now. Um, oh, whoops. Need the root password. Um, endurance. Passwords, copy, paste, and we're in. Do a mount. Has it survived the reboot? Indeed it has. There it is, right down the very bottom here. There we go. We can cd slash mnt slash i scuzzy. Do an ls. There it is. Uh, do a df we can see dev sda there's our 20 gig of endurance storage all done perfect right so um i will figure out why i no longer have a an f disk minus l showing um showing anything to do with dev mapper anymore which is really intriguing me um Having said that, other things we need to look at, well, let's go back to our block storage. In terms of endurance, it's all working, it's all there. You know, we've got it attached, we have a file system, it's usable by us. Um, I just hate open questions. So, what can we do on here? Well, we can instance a replica, but you can't do that until you create snapshots. So we added our snapshot, so let's edit the snapshots, uh, snapshot schedule. Um, we could do daily, hourly, weekly. Well, let's do an hourly. Um, 12th minute of every hour, zero minute, whichever you want, you know. Um, keep it, keep the last 24, I'll probably only keep five snapshots. Um, and once you save that, 
That will save our snapshot schedule. That's a set and forget, guys. Um, so you don't need to remember to go back in. That is now doing our backups for us. We can now choose a replica. So if I purchase a replica, um, you must choose a schedule. So we'll take it from that one. And now you get to choose where you want to put it. So we can have our replica in Amsterdam, Paris, or Frankfurt, completely separate data center, which is one of the real advantages of doing endurance storage. We can now have our replica uh, well away from our existing storage and you know, have safety from a disaster recovery point of view. So really, really useful. That's why you would go with, um, with endurance storage. Other features on here, um, I think that's pretty much it. What else do I want to show you? No snapshots yet. Um, authorized hosts, fine. We could authorize another host um, and have them mounted as well. The locking, it, it doesn't do the locking. So if you do do that, you, you can end up with machines needing rebooting. I have tried that out as well on a couple of Windows machines. Um, much, much to my... Uh, um, you know, much to my uh, surprise, I ended up having to reboot everything. Um, so it can affect it that way. Um, it doesn't come with that sort of uh, file system abstracted layer where you can get the, uh, the locking done for you. Um, but as a piece of storage at a relatively low price, we've got 20 gig of storage there hooked up onto a Linux machine. Join me again, let's go and do it for uh, Windows and see how to use this storage. Thank you.